we are often told as if it's the gospel truth that red meat is bad. It contains all sorts of bad things, and it causes you to have bad things happen to you, to your colon, to your heart, to your blood pressure, to your arteries. You name it, we've been told it. Pretty much any modern woe when it comes to our physical health can be attributed to eating red meat. Evil, evil red meat. Of course, nonsense, but we're told that the best thing we can do is have a plant-based diet. Eat mostly plants, if not exclusively plants, right? Be vegan, be vegetarian, you know, limit your dairy, limit your meat. We're told, we are promised by the end of the decade that we won't, we won't eat meat very often. We're not gonna own much, but we'll be very happy because we'll be eating the human equivalent of dog food. And yes, I know dogs are horribly mistreated when they, with the food they're given. They're, omni they're not omnivores. They are, for the most part, they are carnivores like human beings are, but we feed them plant-based diets for the most part, which is atrocious and should not be permitted. But what is being proposed is to feed us the human equivalent of dog food. And that begs a question, under what basis are they saying that this is better? There isn't really much basis because now we have some interesting stories that have come out recently like this one from Consumer Reports with this headline. Homemade baby food is as likely to contain arsenic and other heavy metals as store-bought, study finds. But there's plenty that parents can do to keep their children's food safe. Now, if you've got kids, and if you've ever walked down the baby food aisle, you've probably noticed that the vast majority of baby food offerings are grains and are fruits and vegetables, the vast majority. Yes, there are meat dishes, there are some with dairy in them, but the overwhelming majority of these products, I can tell you this as a parent who's walked down that aisle, are these are plant-based foods. That is the overwhelming majority. And a lot of that has to do with cost. I don't think Gerber is in, on any, in, in any real way on any plan to foist this on people, but it's a cost-saving thing. But now we're seeing that there are heavy metals located in these foods. And this isn't just you know, like the store-bought stuff this is also homemade. So if you're making homemade baby food, and note the picture that they had there with this article, those are plant ones. These have, you know, heavy metal compounds found in them, cadmium and other things. How does that happen? That's, it's going to be monoculture, monocropping, modern agriculture, modern farming techniques that are the cause of this. The spraying of pesticides and herbicides and other things onto the the grasses or onto the onto the field farm fields to help produce the abundant amount of of plant foods that we tend to eat as people and as modern human beings in the modern world that's how this happens you get that you get modern farm equipment you get pollution you get all sorts of other things the mistreatment of the land and that is how you get this problem and it's in the plant foods also not just in animals in fact the animals tend to have lower rates of this stuff because their bodies have better defenses against this. This is not a unique problem to highly processed foods either. Again, this is homemade baby food. So what is homemade baby food made out of? Well, you take a specialized blender or just a normal blender and you puree avocado or oranges or some combination of fruits and vegetables. And they tend to have the same levels of cadmium and other uh, metals that you would not want a baby, let alone any other, anyone else, consuming in any large amounts. And why is that? Because the stuff is in the plants. It's in the plants. It's not just in the processed foods. This is not just filler ingredients like you're going to find. We've all seen those videos online of people taking, uh, taking and finding metal shavings in their, you know, cereals and things. This is in the pureed peaches. <laughs> This is in the pureed green beans. This is in the plants across the board. This is in the plants that human beings are eating in large numbers. And we know this because we have a study that was published on Nate, the website nature.com from their scientific report section. It comes from scientific reports number, uh, back in what year was this? 2021, just last year. And the article, this peer-reviewed journal article is called Concentration of Cadmium and Lead in Vegetables and Fruits. 
And their findings are that, it, that you find various levels of this across the board. But here's your takeaway quote. It was found that in 12 food samples, the cadmium content exceeded the maximum acceptable level. Among the fruit samples, this result was observed in frozen raspberries, frozen strawberries, and in the case of vegetables, the result was observed in fresh beetroot, frozen carrots, fresh celery, and processed tomatoes. The maximum per permissible level was exceeded in three analyzed food samples, fresh beetroot, frozen carrots, and one sample of frozen tomatoes. In other words, this is across the board. This is everywhere. This problem is not something that is just limited to the highly processed foods. Fresh and frozen vegetables are not super, are not for the most part heavily processed. You know, frozen vegetables get frozen often like at the field. They're frozen by the time they get to the processing centers where they're then cut up and cleaned more and then packaged. That's just how it's done. Uh, you know, a lot of keto influencers will tell you that if you're trying to eat, get the best bang for your buck with your vegetables, go to the frozen aisle because they're often fresher than the fresh vegetables are at the fresh foods at the, at the produce section. And that's actually true. But this is it. We have cadmium levels above the acceptable level in a whole host of vegetables and fruits. I'm curious what you think about that. I'm curious if you think this helps undermine the narrative of plant-based foods. I'm curious if you know anything about cadmium and lead levels in soy, in the grains that we're told to eat more of, and the other things they want to replace our meat with. So let me know if you know anything about this, if you know about these increased levels, because really it looks more and more like an animal-based diet, at the very least, if not full carnivore, is a far superior way to go than consuming a whole lot of plants with all these uh, with all these high levels of heavy metal compounds in them. But let me know what you think of this in the comments. Please like and subscribe if you haven't. It really does help. And thanks for watching today.